So, GM, GM, uh, my friends, how is it going? Welcome to another episode of Starstream. And, uh, well, another week on StarkNet uh, is ending, and uh, we're going to celebrate it uh, with a great session where we'll be touching on different topics, such as the impressive uh, developer, uh, like uh, the impressive growth when it comes to active developers on StarkNet. We're going to have a look at the latest uh, Electric Capital's uh, developers report, and we'll be discovering some good metrics uh, that also interest uh, StarkNet. Uh, besides that, we'll also be seeing how, you know, the latest uh, V3, uh, V0.13 uh, StarkNet version has brought some, uh, some cool uh, cost reductions in the network. And uh, then we'll also be having a look uh, at the different, uh, at some of the recent developments in the DAP scene. And uh, then we'll also have our uh, usual uh, gaming uh, magazine. And also, we'll uh, we'll be definitely touching uh, on more topics uh, as well. So, without much further ado, let's start our start stream, baby. So, let me know how you how you feel, how you're doing, and we'll be starting immediately. GM, GM, my friend, out something. How is it going? Uh, we're really looking forward to the next uh, Ducks Everywhere's collections. Hopefully, it is very very close. And uh, yeah, also looking forward to seeing uh, the weekly auctions resuming as well. So thanks a lot for for coming. And um, yeah, uh, catch you. We uh, catch up. Uh, let's catch up, uh, very soon. So first of all, we'll be speaking about uh, the Electric Capital's uh, developer report, which is a, a report where uh, basically this uh, this fund, Electric Capital, gathers a lot of uh, information regarding uh, development, uh, developers. Uh, uh, so they they gather all the Web3, all or most of the Web3 uh, repositories from GitHub, and they you know they they elaborate some cool analysis out of it. And um, so basically, I mean, they say that. Uh, Developers are a leading indicator of value creation and also a, le a leading indicator of the health of the Web3 industry, overall, or general, generally speaking. So like developers build apps that deliver value to users, killer apps attract customers, new customers bring more developers. It is a cycle, right? Because crypto is significantly open source, we have an unprecedented ability to measure this developer value creation flywheel in an emerging industry. So I really suggest you to have a look at this uh, report. You can find the link in the description. And um, yeah, there were a lot. There are a lot of very interesting uh, uh, charts about developers, uh, developers activity on the whole uh, space. Uh, but obviously, we're gonna um, we're gonna focus on uh, some chart, the, on some charts that were uh, shared in this report. For example, this one that highlights the um, fastest growing ecosystems by overall monthly depths. And as you can see, uh, Starknet uh, uh, ranks pretty high in such a chart with like an increase of thirty three times, so uh, uh, thirty three. 33, sorry, X in uh, in uh, monthly active uh, developers, which is uh, very, very positive. And uh, then, you know, you can uh, also find uh, how StarkNet positions itself uh, in comparison to other projects uh, in, uh, in different charts. And uh, yeah, definitely this is a must read uh, report for, for people who are active uh, in this space. Also, not only about StarkNet, but you know, regarding the all uh, Web3 space. And even though you're only active on StarkNet, it is always good to know what the others are doing, right? And uh, yeah, so you'll find the link to the report on the description, as I said. And uh, obviously, such a chart uh, regarding StarkNet, StarkNet's growth in, uh, in, in developers' number was highlighted uh, uh, was highlighted uh, uh, as well by you know the Starknet official account and by many uh, personalities and uh, uh, key opinion leaders uh, in the in the space. And um, yeah, this is another chart 
I don't know if this was retrieved from the, the report by Electric Capital. Maybe it is from a data um, platform that I didn't manage to, to find. So I, I couldn't retrieve the code, the source. But yeah, basically you can see that uh, for the time being, also during uh, the last month of the year, we saw an increase like um, a yearly increase of 39% in uh, uh, active uh, developers in the network. And if we if we take a two year stance, we had a 350% uh, increase. So since basically StarkNet inception, the, um, you know, the number of developers grew from, uh, grew like uh, more than 300%. There are also other uh, chains that are performing pretty well in these metrics. But uh, yeah, as you can see, Starknet uh, is, leading the, is leading the race in this uh, primitive. And yeah. So also, you know that, uh, you know, the version, uh, the, the mainnet version uh, of uh, V.13, we're going to call it V13, uh, like was um, obviously was deployed on the mainnet like a, a couple of weeks ago and uh, 10 days ago more or less, and uh, you, we can already see some uh, like small but significant uh, improvements in the, in the cost uh, reduction of, uh, of gas fees. As you can see here, Eli Ben Thasson shared this uh, screenshot of, um, you know, fees.com. Uh, the name should be like that. Maybe we'll, uh, we'll check it out how they're doing uh, uh, right now. But when the, this uh, when this snapshot was taken, uh, Starknet was performing uh, quite decently compared to other network. It is still a bit more expensive than other networks such as Optimism, DK Sync, uh, DK Sync Lite, and uh, uh, Arbitrum. Uh, sorry, and um, yeah, and uh, yeah, actually, it is only more expensive than uh, Optimism and DK Sync Lite because it is actually becoming uh, uh, cheaper than uh, Arbitrum. And this is definitely a big and a welcomed uh, news, very welcoming news. And yeah, for example, Polygon DKVM, <laughs> it has a very high low uh, gas fee. And then also for sending tokens, uh, Starknet is becoming cheaper and cheaper in line with, uh, with also the most performing uh, uh, chains. Also, DK Sync here. I think they don't quote the like uh, the the costs here because they're subsidizing the the gas fees for the time being, most of it. So, yeah. Let me see if I can find the, the like the current current statistic about these um, these metrics. So. Yeah, basically the, the statistics are, are quite similar to the one from the screenshot. So we have a 53, uh, so alpha dollar for uh, for uh, swapping tokens and 17 uh, cents for uh, sending tokens to other, um, to other addresses. And yeah, so in comparison with the other one, I mean, it is now a, a bit more expensive than uh, Arbitrum, than Optimism. Yeah, it is strange because when that snapshot was taken, uh, Stagnet was performing uh, uh, as good as Arbitrum, if not better, but now Arbitrum has a, a definitely lower fees. So we still have a lot to do in these, uh, in these metrics, but I'm sure we've also with, uh, you know, the, the overall Ethereum L1's uh, uh, developments with Denkun and so on, uh, fees will, uh, will decrease uh, uh, gradually, but also very, uh, in a, in a very fast way as well. So let's move to uh, the next topic, which should be, yeah, actually another good metric, uh, another good website where you can um, you can monitor uh, gas fees on Starknet. It is this website developed by, uh, I think, the, the Chinese uh, Starknet community. Uh, you know, there are two uh, big Starknet communities in China. And uh, yeah, they also created this cool uh, website where you can see, uh, yeah, the, also how Starknet uh, gas fees are doing, uh, their comparison with Ethereum, and uh, and so on. So, for example, here we can see Starknet ga transfer gas for the time being costs 
seventy dollars. Uh, sorry, uh, seventeen uh, cents. There are also like lower bottoms and higher peaks, I suppose. For example, then starting with token gas, like it costs uh, eighty three cents. So definitely have a look at these websites, and you find the link uh, in the description. Okay, now. We continue speaking about uh, developers and um, Omar Espechel from the Stagner Foundation worked uh, on this very good uh, thread that summarizes all the most important updates uh, and uh, resources that uh, you have to follow if you're learning Cairo. Cairo, obviously, for those who don't know, is the programming language used for development on Starknet. And, you know, there are a lot of uh, resources that can help uh, uh, people on their first steps uh, with Cairo uh, in their uh, in their journey. And uh, for example, the Starknet book that was also um, updated a lot. We'll be speaking about that uh, uh, in a while. Then uh, obviously like uh, the Cairo book, then there are, you know, the um, uh, practical uh, exercises, Starklings, the Not Guardians uh, uh, quests. Then we also have like uh yeah one of the most important uh resources is definitely the Cairo book and this was a sort of like a coders map so first of all you start you start with uh the first two chapters of the starting book then you move uh, like to um to some practical exercises and then you come back to the uh to the other uh chapters of the starting book and there are also some references to this to other to additional documentations around the language, and yeah, and this is a very cool um, cool map. You know, so start here, start the book chapter zero one, then Cairo book practical exercises, then again start the book, and yeah, the end of the beginning. So if you're a dev, you. If you're like a dev beginning uh, your journey on Starknet and you know using the Cairo programming language, this map can uh, help you out a lot. And as I was saying, the Cairo book was updated a lot in the last month. And uh, Frico Ben, who's one of the leading, uh, like the the repository manager of one of the repository manager of uh, Cairo book, so one of the leading leading contributors. Uh, uh, to this um, important uh, dev resource uh, has published a thread where he highlights uh, the most important updates that were uh, applied uh, to uh, to start to the Starknet book during the past months. Let's have a look at them. So improvements in the storage chapter, clarifying the storage layout of auto-generated store imps and legacy maps. New chapter on ownership, introducing the concept of the linear type system, the rationale for this design related to the Cairo memory model, and more details about moving, copying, and dropping values. A chapter on Cairo's native hash functions and how to use them properly, refactor of the code listings to use anonymous generic implementation parameters, refactor of the section on trades for more clarity and better examples, new chapter on how to properly test components and their internals, improvements on the Stacknet chapter, details on the new printing, and other stringulated macros. So migration from Cairo, um, from the like uh, the Cairo versions uh, uh, before 2.3 to the 2.4, and then yeah, other other updates as well. And uh, yeah, another important uh, news that you should know if you're a developer and if you also want to to get some uh, some money and uh, also to win some money by participating uh, to an hackathon such as this one, which is the winter hackathon organized by uh, Starknet, Starkware, and it's going to take place uh, on the Taikai's um, platform. And if you remember well, like uh, last week, we discussed... Um, you know the Taikai's uh, Starknet Exploration Hackathon that was uh, that took place at the beginning of December. We highlighted uh, the projects uh, that took part in that session, and uh, you can find uh, the um, the clip related to to this analysis uh, in our uh, YouTube channel, and uh, and we also made a thread, you know, out of it. Uh, sorry, uh, like a long article plus the the clip on uh, on Twitter. And um, 
yeah, we uh, we highlighted um, some of the projects uh, that uh, took place uh, in the last one. And uh, Tech Eyes is back with uh, the Starknet Winter Hackathon this time. And uh, it, it's going to be consisting in workshops, courses, and uh, gems. So um, it is the best, uh, like uh, the best events that can prepare you properly for uh, its Ethereum Denver and also for the Acker House that will be uh, will be taking place there, and uh, and there were the corresponding hackathon as well. So whether you're an experienced developer or simply a blockchain enthusiast, this hackathon welcomes everyone. So timeline registration close on the 29th of January, submission deadline on the 16th of February. So it will um, it will last during the first half of February. There are different tracks. So there are some tracks that were also present uh, in the stack and exploration uh, hackathon, such as Pragma Oracle. So dealing with uh, the uh, the Pragma Oracle and the verifiable uh, the uh, random verifiable number VRF, um, and then the like uh, the Erodotus Dev storage proofs as well, the Dojo gaming engine. Then we have a, a new track that wasn't present uh, in the in the last uh, Taikai's uh, hackathon, which is Jedi Swap, the AMM. And then we also have uh, um, Argent, um, not the the Argent wallet as well. I think there are also other projects. Let me see, because I remember. Yeah, exactly. So there are there's also another new track, you know, the DeFi AMM's uh, aggregator. Then there is, as I said, Argent track. There's also a Bravos track. So both wallets, both Starknet wallets are represented. This is very, very cool. Then there's the Dojo track, the Giza track, once again, the Erodotus track. Then there's the Jedi Swap track and the Pragma track. Okay. So if you want to participate, please sign up and we wish you good luck. And yeah, as I said, you find both the clip uh, about the the last uh, Taikai's uh, hackathon and also its um, its uh, its corresponding uh, long uh, long heads article on the comment section. Then speaking about Denver, you know uh, there were uh, like some uh, some news related to Starknet presence uh, during this very important uh, event, one of the most important events. Uh, in the Web3 uh, space during the year. And uh, yeah, so it was already been announced uh, in the past weeks, but now it is uh, fully official that uh, uh, there will be an Acker House in Denver from the 22nd to the 7th, 27th of February. And you can, uh, you can still apply to it. So it's gonna be five days of competitive hacking, mentorship from StarkNet leaders and immersive workshops. And then before that, no, actually after the Hacker House, so the day after the Hacker House ends, there will be the, the Stark City Denver conference organized by Topology, a gaming, uh, um, a high-tech gaming laboratory, laboratory, I would call it, then Cartridge, the on-chain gaming company and Influence, one of the most um, like, uh, liked and beloved the games on Starknet. And yeah, it's going to happen on the 28th of February. So full day conference around on-chain gaming, account abstractions, Starks, and a deep dive into Starkware's exploration team projects. Very cool. There are different uh, uh, threads about, uh, you know, this, um, uh, this Starknet presence that we're going to see in Denver next month. So now let's mention some of the most important developments that took place in the DAP team during this week. We'll be uh, we'll definitely not be able to cover all of them, but like just a couple of them, and I pick them randomly. So, um, for example, Fibrous, the the uh, another AMM, uh, which is quite active uh, on Stacknet, introduced the another destination feature, which is a swap and send feature that lets you swap and send tokens and then, like with uh, only one transaction i suppose they leverage the the power of uh, multi calls that is a, 
a tech feature um, which is na natively incorporated on StackNet that allows you to, um, yeah, to include different actions in the same transaction, which results in a lower fees and also in, a, in speed, right? Then we also have like a yet another bridge, which is one of the products that are being developed by uh, Green Labs, which is a DAP factory uh, backed by uh, Lambda class. And uh, they've been working uh, on this uh, bridge powered by um, uh, storage proofs, proofs for a while. And uh, yeah, they um, uh, I, I played with it a couple of weeks ago as they, um, they introduced a, a private uh, test net first. And now the, the public one is, uh, is open to everybody. So uh, let's have a look and see how fast uh, the, the yet another bridge is actually. And obviously it is still in testnet, so we need to verify if such performances will be, um, will be maintained on the mainnet as well. So and then congratulations to Equivo, the, um, the Uniswap V3, um, uh, V3 AMM on, uh, on StarkNet, and uh, they reached uh, $1 billion in uh, cumulative uh, volume. And uh, they also introduced some uh, updates uh, in, that uh, they reduced the uh, swap gas fees on their protocol. Another very interesting thing is that um, there are going to be a lot of um, like uh, open source um, uh, uh, rewards, like uh, a lot of rewards for uh, for open source uh, contributors, for contributors and developers uh, contributing to open source projects. And an example is that, um, for example, this month, like 300,000 Stagnet tokens were, um, uh, were like uh, made uh, available for uh, uh, the projects that are being lead, that are being led by the uh, StarQuest exploration team. For example, the Unruggable Ar uh, Meme Coins um, framework, uh, which is a framework to uh, to ship like to um, to issue uh, Meme Coins or like speculative tokens in a safe way, in the sense that uh, uh, there would be a limitation uh, to uh, rug pools. Then, like uh, Madara, the Stacknet sequencer, then the Cairo VM in Zig. Uh, yeah, yeah, which, uh, if I remember well, it is a, a, a programming language which is very used for for mobile, and then also the Sat Satoru uh, project, which is a synthetics platform um, that is being inspired by GMX, and um, yeah, so they're distributing a lot of Starknet tokens uh, through the Only Dust uh, platform, which is a platform that helps. Uh, uh, contributors for uh, open source projects, uh, you know, getting some uh, some tokens, and basically they they manage the contributions flow and they reward uh, the contributions as well. So then ICO was announced, which is another AMM, and uh, so it is going to um, to join the other AMMs in the Starknet uh, arena. So it's uh, the AMM scene in Starknet is getting uh, interest more interesting by the day and um, yeah they um, i think they yeah they are uh, they used to be called sphinx so they're not a new project to be honest they had been developing on starknet uh, for a while under the name of sphinx and uh, now they they rebranded uh, and um, yeah i think their main net launch uh, launch is also not that far because they had been already working on the product for uh, for a while so um, yeah, good luck, guys, and looking forward to seeing your uh, your AMM being deployed on Starknet. So guys, are you ready to begin our uh, weekly on-chain gaming uh, magazine? Just give me uh, a couple of minutes, and uh, we'll uh, we start it up. So 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 let's start our uh, on-chain gaming uh, magazine, and yeah. First of all, I want to say that we finally have the winners uh, of the Dojo Holiday Game Jam. So congrats to all of them. Let's have a look uh, at uh, who they are. So the winners are Pistols at 10 blocks, Starcane and Run Asler Run. 
we covered them in the past two uh, on-chain gaming magazines and um, yeah we still have uh, the the final uh, the final part that we'll be doing uh, uh, right now in a, in a couple of minutes but yeah these uh, these games we already spoke about them in the previous sessions and yeah congrats to them let's also see also the second and third uh, uh, ranking uh, uh, like um, a r- a ranking uh, like the other participants and yeah so pistol at 10 blocks uh, won the prize for 10k usdc and 15k starknet tokens very good then second place second place uh, prize for 5k usdc at 10k stark goes to starkane obviously guys the starknet tokens are not live yet okay these are only unlocations but the token is not active it's not transferable uh, okay it is not live so be careful of scammers because there are a lot of scammers promising starknet tokens for the time being so already and uh and uh, definitely they are not uh legit so be careful because for the time being there is no starknet token in uh in uh in the market so the third place price goes to uh run asler run 1k usdc and 5k stark and then there are the different uh, positions for uh, uh, the different tracks. So for our Rams track, the price for 7.5k in Lords is split between uh, Plug Survivor and Castle Exapolis. For our the Dope Wars track price of 5k in paper, the winner is Run Asler Run. The team also backed a set of Dope NFTs from the Dope Wars collection dop wars collection then the dinner uh, the winner sorry of the brick nft track uh, for 3k usdc is uh, ars dot herf congratulations to the ars Earth team and yeah we we also saw this project which is an augmented reality project where you basically project your um ducts everywhere uh, you know your ducts on the uh, on the real life right as if they were Pokemon, you know, and uh, yeah, the, it was very cool. We we saw that in our uh, uh, Dojo Game Jam analysis. And uh, then for the uh, Pixel Low track price of $250 in USDC, the winner is Pixel Low 2024. Congrats to MetaCap 00.007. So yeah, then there are, you know, the different track, um, winners once again star kane in the aw research track then plug survivor and slayer for integrating the pragma verifiable random function then for the web 3mq track prize we have a split between mississippi mini and loot dungeon then finally, for the cartridge track price of 3K USDC, the winner is Starking once again. So Starking won a lot of prizes. Congrats, guys. And yeah, so once again, thank you to all the participants. Again, we are amazed at the effort and level of quality for all the submissions for the events. Keep an eye out for our next game jam and other events and releases from Dojo. Cool, guys. This was a, a very epic uh, Dojo game jam. And um, yeah, let's also finish analyzing it because, you know, in the past two weeks, we analyzed uh, the, the gem in, uh, in parts because it was such a long, uh, you know, long list of projects that took place, took part uh, in, the, in, in this gaming hackathon. So we couldn't cover it in one session. But now we, we miss only a couple of, uh, of projects. But before moving to those projects, we need to mention that also the, uh, the Dojo... Um, uh, gaming engine was uh, updated to the version at 0.5.0 and so what changed uh, there are different uh, changes so Cairo one account supported by Evolvard so use module instead of file path for Habigen and you know different uh, different changes breaking changes generate graph QL attributes 
are now properly camel cased. And note, Catala does not support RPC v6 yet, and as uh, and such is incompatible. And as a result, it is incompatible with Starkly. Back to our uh, Dojo Gaming Jam analysis. So there was a Stark Inu. What is Stark Inu? Okay, Stark Inu is a non-chain casino style game built on top of Dojo and using Pragma verifiable random function. And um, yeah, so it is a dice game, right? Or no, or is a, a, a betting game, I suppose. Okay, but so with randomly generated multipliers, deposit into the bank to place your bet and test your luck. I thought it was a dice game, and maybe there is another one, which is a dice game. Yeah, it is just a, an automatic bet, I guess. Pure gambling. And yeah, then we had Sanmoku Dojo, which is, I suppose, something like uh, an on-chain Sudoku, I suppose. Let's see. So Sanmoku Dojo Tic-Tac-Toe on-chain. Okay, it is a Tic-Tac-Toe game. And yeah, let's see. Um, okay. The, the, the. Very good. So Samoku Dojo stands as a pioneering fully unchained bar game powered by the Dojo engine and StarkNet. Our platform offers an innovative gaming experience founded on blockchain principles, ensuring transparency, security, and decentralized gameplay. Cool. Then we have Loot Auto Chess, which is a chess game that aims to bring an auto battler into the RAMS ecosystem. So instead of having, you know, the, the chess, um, how do you say, like the chess uh, items, let's say, uh, the chess uh, classic statues, you have these uh, these monsters from uh, the Loot Survivor game. And yeah, this is quite cool. So you can, uh, I, I suppose you can blend it with, uh, with NFTs. And um, yeah, this is going to be a very interesting game inside the Loot Survivor, uh, definitely. And it looks pretty, pretty fun. I'm not clicking on links today because uh, you know it's gonna take us a while if we if we start playing with it. But yeah, let's have a look at the trailer. This is the coding behind it. Okay, let me see. Okay, then you see the different monsters, how you move them in the game. I think that yeah, they are also automatic. Yeah, so there's some uh, AI behind it. So yeah, I think this is this could be a very very fun game inside, very fun uh, mini game inside the the Rams uh, autonomous world and uh, precisely inside the Loot Survivor game, which is very beloved by the Starknet crowd, especially by our friend uh, Odin. Shout out to him. And uh, yeah. So we have the last two games. The first one is rather than a game, it is a governance hub for the gaming scene. So yeah, which is the Dojo governance hub. So built on the robust architecture of Frontinus House and coded in Dojo, our world governance module, Rams Governance Hub, revolutionizes the altering of attributes and parameters in games developed using the Dojo on-chain uh, engine on StackNet. Operating fully on-chain, this module uh, establishes a democratic process where community members can propose alterations by submitting a VIP on Frank Frontino's house. Upon proposal submission, a community-wide vote ensues utilizing uh, on-chain voting mechanisms that involve the burning of gas fees for added transparency. Once the vote concludes, the game parameters are seamlessly adjusted in accordance with the past VIP consensus. Join us, so VIP stands for Biblioteca Improvement Proposal. 
if I remember well. Biblioteca DAO is the DAO behind uh, um, RAMS. And yeah, so join us in shaping the future of games developed using the Dojo engine on Starknet through the centralized and community-driven governance. So for more info, check their uh, GitHub out and also the, the demo. Actually, let's have a look if we can have a look at the, no. Okay. Then last but not least, we have a Cosmic Quest, the realms of knowledge, which is a quest about uh, the, the realms autonomous world. And um, so we create this on-chain game. It is a Wario Dojo game jam project. It might be the world's first uh, uh, quiz game on, on the realms world, answering questions to explore multiverse, featuring composability to integrate into other games as well, showcasing commercial potential. Oh, this is quite interesting because, yeah, this is very um, powerful because you can use this as a, as a like tool of, uh, as an educational tool to uh, educate, to form new, new, not only new developers, new gaming developers, but also and foremost, new gaming, uh, new gamers, you know? So yeah, why making a quiz game? Because on chain game for now is different to play. Obviously, I mean, web two gamers, you know, uh, like um, normal, let's say normal gamers, you know, they the ones who play web two games, uh, you know, they they don't know how web three works. So definitely, definitely, they need um, uh, educational uh, resources, the educational material. And um, yeah, we need a simple and intuitive way to onboard uh, more users like our friends and family. I hope this game is simple and fun enough for my grandpa as it's the first on-chain game he's ever played in his life. How to play? Connect your Starknet wallet like Argent or Bravos to log in. Choose your answer, answer to each question till treasure quits being triggered. Embark on your explanatory journey through parallel universe. Different universes, different values and insights. You can find Little Prince Universe, Duzalo Universe, Longevity Universe, uh, and much more. Not only healing warmth, but also wisdom from the crypto grave mines. So this can be used not only for the Dojo, Dojo Chain Engine, for the Dojo um, Gaming uh, Universe, but also for other, you know, for other uh, like topics uh, and uh, and scenes as well. As, as for sponsors of this game gem, we insert a special page includes your brand's culture into the multiverse, the dope wars, brick NFT, ducks everywhere, and perhaps we could be integrated into your games as being a quiz feature. So this is a very composable project. You can uh, introduce it and you can apply it uh, to different games and uh, different projects as well. They don't have to be uh, gaming related as well. They can be also NFT projects, maybe DeFi projects as well, in order to educate about DeFi in a gamified way. This is definitely something we need. We we're already seeing a lot of efforts in this, you know, in this field, such as you know the Starknet Quest. You know, they achieved a, a like a, a very big. I don't remember the number, but like a, more than two hundred thousand uh, quests that have been completed uh, in the Starknet Quest platform. So these kind of initiatives uh, uh, definitely have some markets and people are uh, enjoying them. Some of them use them, are playing I'm playing with them only for like, you know, speculation around the airdrop, but still they're very useful to educate people around uh, the stack and ecosystem. So we definitely need more of such uh, initiatives. So good luck to the old, um, you know, to Valerie and to the old um, Cosmic Quest team. So I'm sure you will be doing great things in this year. So guys, we finally finished uh, our analysis of the um, uh, holiday <laughs> Dojo Game Jam. It took us a uh, three star stream session, but uh, we finally made it. Let me know if you enjoyed the old, uh, uh, the old analysis and if you want to uh, replicate it uh, for the next uh, uh, Dojo Game Jams, that hopefully will be many and uh, will be happening soon, very soon uh, this year. 
the last news of this session is also about gaming and we are going to to see an autonomous world laboratory taking place uh, for the whole month of uh, of long oh, sorry of february in uh, in london and um like if you uh, um if you take part in this uh, sort of hackathon you can win uh, some uh, some free um, uh, free tickets and accommodation for the um the eat london's week that be taking place in march there will be definitely something related to stack and as well during those days so the by participating to this uh, to this hackathon to this laboratory, you could win uh, some um, yeah some cool uh, accommodation and um, and also travel grants in order to participate and to be in London during the uh, the it um, it globals hackathon there and uh, the London it week over there taking place in mid March if I remember well from the 13th to the 15th. Yeah, actually, the Eat London week will be from the 13th of March until the 18th. So let's have a look like Hackathon team. There are a total of seven experimental uh, directions in this uh, autonomous world laboratory. Participating teams are required to explore these seven directions and develop games, modifications or frameworks during the Hackathon. In order to conduct concept valid validation, focusing on one or more of the teams mentioned above. So autonomous world and PC, autonom autonomous world physics, autonomous world time, autonomous world governance, off-chain computation, distribution channel, and light client. Quite good. So guys, if you are interested, applications are still open. And yeah. So guys, this uh, session of the Stark stream is over. I hope you really liked it and um, hopefully we'll be seeing each other uh, next week for another session. Levin Sandek, thanks a lot for, for being here, for watching the show, and I wish you a great weekend. Remember to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel that will help us massively and uh, you will be doing your part to share the Stackner vibe, all right? So guys, see you next time. Take care. Bye. See you.